desertion is the abandonment of a military duty or post, without permission and is done with the intention of not returning. This contrasts with unauthorized absence, or absence without leave, which are temporary forms of absence. In the United States Army, United States Air Force, British Armed Forces, Australian Defence Force, New Zealand Defence Force, Singapore Armed Forces and Canadian Armed Forces. Military personnel will become, a while if absent from their post without a valid pass, liberty or leave. The United States Marine Corps, United States Navy, and United States Coast Guard generally refer to this as an authorized absence. Personnel are dropped from their unit roles after 30 days and then listed as deserters. However, as a matter of U.S. military law, desertion is not measured by time away from the unit, but rather by leaving or remaining absent from their unit, organization, or place of duty where there has been a determined intent to not return. If that intent is determined to be to avoid hazardous duty or sheer contractual obligation, if they enlist or accept an appointment in the same or another branch of service without disclosing the fact that they have not been properly separated from current service. Edward Donald Slovak was born in Detroit, Michigan on February 18, 1920 to a Catholic Polish-American family, the son of Anna and Joseph Slowikowski. As a minor, he was a troublemaker and had contact with the police frequently. Slavik was first arrested at 12 years old when he and some friends broke into a foundry to steal brass. Between 1932 and 1937, he was arrested several times for offenses which included petty theft, breaking and entering, and disturbing the peace. In October 1937 he was sent to prison, but was paroled in September 1938. After stealing and crashing a car with two friends while drunk, he was sent back to prison in January 1939. Slovak was a United States Army soldier during World War II and the only American soldier to be court-martialed and executed for desertion since the American Civil War. Although over 21,000 American soldiers were given varying sentences for desertion during World War II, including 49 death sentences, Slavic's death sentence was the only one that was carried out. During World War II, 1.7 million courts martial were held, representing one-third of all criminal cases, tried in the United States during the same period. Most of the cases were minor, as were the sentences. Nevertheless, a clemency board, appointed by the Secretary of War in the summer of 1945, reviewed all general courts martial where the accused was still in confinement and remitted or reduced the sentence in 85 percent of the 27,000 serious cases reviewed the death penalty was rarely imposed and usually only for cases involving rape or murder Slavic was the only soldier executed who had been convicted of a purely military offense while en route to his assigned unit, Slavic and Private John Tanky, a friend he met during basic training, took cover during an artillery attack and became separated from their replacement attachment. This was the point at which Slavic later stated he found he wasn't cut out for combat. The next morning, Slavic and Tanky found a Canadian military police unit and remained with them for the next six weeks. Tanky wrote to the regiment to explain their absence before he and Slavic reported to their unit for duty on October 7, 1944. 
The U.S. Army's rapid advance through France in the early fall of 1944 had caused many replacement soldiers to have trouble finding their assigned units, and so no charges were filed against either soldier. The following day, October 8, Slavik informed his company commander, Captain Ralph Grote, that he was too scared to serve in a frontline rifle company and asked to be reassigned to a unit in a rear area. He then told Grote that he would run away if he were assigned to a rifle unit, and asked his captain if that would constitute desertion. Grote confirmed that it would, refused Slavic's request for reassignment, and sent him to a rifle platoon. The next day, October 9, Slavic deserted from his unit. John Tanky caught up with him and attempted to persuade him to stay, but Slavic's only comment was that his mind was made up. Slavic walked several miles to the rear and approached an enlisted cook at a headquarters detachment, presenting him with a note. Slavic was charged with desertion to avoid hazardous duty and tried by court-martial on November 11, 1944. Slavic had to be tried by a court-martial composed of staff officers from other U.S. Army divisions, because all combat officers from the 28th Infantry Division were fighting on the front lines. The prosecutor, Captain John Green, presented witnesses to whom Slavic had stated his intention to run away. According to his defense counsel, Captain Edward Woods, Slavic had elected not to testify. At the end of the day, the nine officers of the court found Slavic guilty and sentenced him to death. The sentence was reviewed and approved by the division commander, Major General Norman Cota. General Cota's stated attitude was given the situation as I knew it in November, 1944, I thought it was my duty to this country to approve that sentence. If I hadn't approved it if I had let Slavic accomplish his purpose I don't know how I could have gone up to the line and looked a good soldier in the face. On December 9th, Slavic wrote a letter to the Supreme Allied Commander. General Dwight D. Eisenhower, pleading for clemency. Eisenhower confirmed the execution order on December 23rd, noting that it was necessary to discourage further desertions. The sentence came as a shock to Slovak, who had been expecting a dishonorable discharge and a prison term. The same punishment he had seen meted out to other deserters from the division while he was confined to the stockade. As he was an ex-convict, a dishonorable discharge would have made little further impact on his civilian life as a common laborer. And military prison terms for discipline offenses were widely expected to be commuted once the war was over. The execution by firing squad was carried out at 10.04 a.m. on January 31, 1945, near the village of St. Mario Mines. The defiant Slavic said to the soldiers whose duty it was to prepare him for the firing squad before they led him to the place of execution. They're not shooting me for deserting the United States Army, thousands of guys have done that. They just need to make an example out of somebody and I'm it because I'm an ex-con. I used to steal things when I was a kid, and that's what they are shooting me for. They're shooting me for the bread and chewing gum I stole when I was 12 years old. As required by military custom, Slavic's uniform was stripped of all identifying military insignia, buttons and any other accoutrements. He was wrapped with a GI blanket over his shoulders to protect him against the cold, and led into the courtyard of a house chosen for the execution because of its high masonry wall. 
which would deflect errant bullets and discourage the local French civilians from witnessing the Somme proceedings. Soldiers stood him against a 6 inch by 6 inch post. He was then strapped to the post with web belts, with one wrapped around and under his arms and hung on his spike on the back side of the post to prevent his body from slumping following the volley, and the others securing his waist and knees. Just before a soldier placed a black hood over his head, the attending chaplain, Father Carl Patrick Cummings, said to Slovak, Eddie, when you get up there, say a little prayer for me. Slovak replied with his last words, Okay, Father. I'll pray that you don't follow me too soon. Twelve hand-picked soldiers from the 109th Regiment were detailed for the firing squad. The weapons used were standard issue. M1 Garand rifles, 11 of them loaded with just one round and one rifle loaded with a blank round. On the command of fire, Slavic was hit by 11 bullets, at least four of them being fatal. The wounds ranged from high in the neck region out to the left shoulder, over the left chest, and under the heart. One bullet was in the left upper arm. An army physician quickly determined Slavic had not been immediately killed. As the firing squad's rifles were being reloaded to fire another volley, Slavic died. He was 24 years old. The entire execution took 15 minutes. Thank you for watching Death Row.